Back when I first started this channel, almost three and a half years ago, this would be a classic HITC 7s video. Indeed, I made videos on the 7 greatest African footballers of all time, the 7 greatest British footballers of all time, even the 7 greatest Irish footballers, so I'm not quite sure why I left Asia out of that format. But following a handful of suggestions, I thought why not return to our roots, especially in light of some dazzling performances from and out of the Premier League's finest Asian footballer right now, and that is Son Heung-min. Asia is by far the most populous continent on Earth. Home to roughly 60% of the world's overall population, there are over seven times as many people living in Asia as there are in North America. In fact, India and China individually both have populations larger than all of Europe and more than double all of North America, so Asia should certainly have some strength in numbers. Despite that fact, we are yet to see an Asian nation win the World Cup or an Asian player win the Ballon d'Or with only five Asian footballers ever having been nominated for the prestigious individual accolade. Today's video is just my personal countdown of the seven greatest Asian footballers of all time, but first and foremost, I should lay out the criteria. To be eligible, a player must represent or have represented an Asian national team, not counting Australia, who compete in the Asian Football Confederation, but are not actually based in the continent of Asia. So that means no Frank Su, who was half Chinese but played for England at international level, and no Harry Kuehl, since, well, Australia isn't in Asia. It's incredibly difficult to assess players who only play domestically and or never left Asia, and those players suffer as a consequence, but there will be extensive honourable mentions between first and second place. Here are my views on the seven greatest Asian footballers of all time. Majid Abdullah In a seven that is dominated by East Asians who played in Europe, Majid Abdullah is very much the exception to the rule in seventh place earning a place in our seven, despite only ever playing for a single club in a single Middle Eastern nation. Famous for his first-class technique and his prolific goal scoring, Abdullah was nicknamed the Arabian Jewel. An eye-catching figure out on the pitch, Abdullah was tall, elegant, and a menace in the air. Perhaps the most complete Asian centre-forward of all time, despite his many talents, so many of Abdullah's goals came as a consequence of his pace in behind and his lethal left foot. Born in Saudi Arabia's second city of Jeddah, Abdullah was the son of Sudanese immigrants to Saudi Arabia. He spent his entire career, spanning some 21 years, with Riyadh-based outfit Al Nazir, becoming Al Nazir, the Saudi leagues, and also the Saudi national team's all-time top scorer. Abdullah scored 259 goals in 266 games for Al Nazir in total, in addition to 72 goals in 117 games for Saudi Arabia. Whilst it can be difficult to properly assess Abdullah's domestic achievements up against someone who succeeded in a more competitive league, he routinely proved his class against better quality opposition, scoring for Saudi Arabia, against the likes of England, Argentina and Brazil in 1988 alone. So he gets us started in this seven. Hong Myungbo. In sixth place is another man who never played in Europe, but one who did leave Asia. Hong Myung Bo played football in Japan, South Korea and the United States, ending his playing days with two seasons with LA Galaxy in Major League Soccer. It's a great shame that Hong never played in Europe, because if he had, I have little doubt his reputation would be far greater than it is now. A cultured sweeper or libero, Hong was quick, he read the game well, and he was notoriously tough to beat in one-on-one -on -one situations. Adored by teammates and supporters alike for his unassuming personality, contrasted with his starring performances, Hong is South Korea's joint most capped player of all time, having won 136 caps between 1990 and 2002. He went out on a high at the 2002 World Cup, captaining South Korea as they reached the semi-finals and joining Hitoshi Nakata as one of only two Asian players to make Pele's list of the 125 greatest living footballers in 2004. A tireless runner who was unflappable in possession and possessed an impressive range of passing, Hong dictated play from deep, and he made FIFA's World XI in 1997. He was also the first Asian player to receive the bronze ball at a World Cup, awarded to the third best player at the tournament in 2002, trailing only Ronaldo and Oliver Kahn. Had Hong spent a few seasons in Europe and emphatically shown his class, which I suspect he was more than capable of doing, he might find himself a couple of places further up in this seven. As things stand, the man Koreans call the eternal libero takes sixth place. Hayatoshi Nakata Mentioned only moments ago when talking about the only two Asian footballers to have made Pele's very diplomatic and not very scientific FIFA 100 list, Hayatoshi Nakata, was the only man to join Hong Myungbo in that exclusive club. 
In terms of sheer talent and ability, I think Nakata would have to be considered among the three most gifted Asian footballers of all time, and some might argue that he is the best of the lot. Often labelled as a Japanese David Beckham due to his marketability in Asia and his interest in fashion and modelling, on the pitch, at his best, Nakata was more reminiscent of someone like Kaka. Brilliant on the ball and effortless in the pass, Nakata could twist and turn players inside out before putting the ball on a plate for one of his teammates. A two-time Asian Footballer of the Year, Nakata probably played his best football for Perugia in Serie A, but his finest achievements came with Roma, where he won a Serie A title in 2001. Nakata peaked young, in his early 20s, before his off-field interest seemed to take precedence over his training and performances on the pitch. He still managed to rack up 77 caps for Japan, featuring in the 1998, 2002 and 2006 World Cups. Nakata actually ended his career, aged only 29, with the season on loan at Bolton Wanderers in the Premier League. Given how early he cut his career short and the brevity of his peak in comparison to others, Nakata doesn't crack my top four, but his talent alone is sufficient to earn him a spot in this seven. Park Ji Sung The most decorated Asian footballer of all time, it's pretty clear to see where Park Ji Sung scores highly and why his inclusion in this seven was never in any doubt. One of the most industrious midfielders of all time, it would be disrespectful to talk about Park only in terms of his stamina, but it seems like a sensible starting point. Nicknamed Three Lungs Park by some during his time at Manchester United, Park was a versatile and tireless Swiss army knife within Sir Alex Ferguson's arsenal for seven seasons at Old Trafford. Capable of playing in a box-to-box -box role as a midfield sitter or out wide on either flank, in the big games, Park was often tasked with simply removing the threat of an individual opposition player. In his autobiography, Andrea Perlo cited Park as the only player who he could never get the better of either at Manchester United or at PSV. That's high praise from one of the finest midfielders of a generation, and Wayne Rooney has previously stated that Park was as important to the Red Devils between 2006 and 2009 as Cristiano Ronaldo. Personally, I think that may be a step too far, but Fergie's reliance on Park when it mattered most shouldn't be underestimated. Quick, tactically intelligent, and neat on the ball, you could stick prime Park Ji Sung in just about any team in the world, and he would do an admirable job. In total, he won 19 trophies at club level, including the Premier League and the Champions League, he was nominated for the Ballon d'Or in 2005, and he won exactly 100 caps for South Korea. Chubumkin Into the top three we go, and we're now dealing with players who could all have been accurately described as world class at some stage during their playing days. It is difficult to pinpoint Chabumkin's peak since he was consistently brilliant for so many years, and that's one of the reasons why he is so frequently cited as the finest Asian footballer of all time. A trailblazer in so many respects, perhaps the most impressive thing about Chabumkin is his international record. Chabumkin is South Korea's all-time leading goalscorer and joint leading appearance holder, having scored 58 goals from 136 caps. That is despite the fact that his international career essentially ended in 1978 when he scored his last goal aged only 25 and left behind semi-professional football in Asia for a crack at life in the Bundesliga. To have scored 56 international goals and have won over 130 caps at the age of 25 is just preposterous and Cha took his unique approach to forward play to Germany with significant success. Famous for his thick thighs and explosive long shots, Char possessed an explosive burst of acceleration and a tremendous leap that made him a threat when balls came in behind or into the box. He scored a total of 121 goals in 371 games for Eintracht Frankfurt and Bayer Leverkusen, becoming one of the most celebrated foreign players to have ever played in German football. Nicknamed Char Boom for his all-round explosivity, Chabumkin spent a decade as the Bundesliga's all-time record foreign goalscorer and he takes third place in my seven. Son Heung-min The current golden boy of Asian and South Korean football, Son Heung-min has eclipsed the achievements of almost all of those who came before him at the age of only 28, as far as I'm concerned. One of the most gifted forward players on earth right now, Son is quick, creative and prolific. He can beat players with pace or skill, he can play anywhere across the forward line, and he scores a myriad of different types of goals. What's more, he does it all whilst making it look so effortless and easy. Son has been starring in European football ever since he signed for Hamburg a decade ago, but his career has been a tale of constant improvement. Whilst he is just one year shy of the age at which Hidesoshi Nakata retired, Son is still improving. 
He gets more and more devastating in front of goal and intelligent with his movement and passing every season, and you could argue that there hasn't been a single more impressive player in the Premier League in the early parts of this season than Son. If there has been, then it's probably been Harry Kane, the man who Son appears to have a telepathic relationship with these days. The scorer of 26 goals from just 87 caps at international level, and 143 goals in 407 games at club level, whilst it is now widely recognised that Son is a special talent, I'm still not sure he gets the full credit that he deserves. He has hit double figures in every full season he has spent in the Premier League, and he already has 7 in 5 so far this term, he is a 5-time Asian Footballer of the Year winner, and he was nominated for the Ballon d'Or in 2019. For my money, Son has already eclipsed the achievements of every other modern-day Asian great within the world of football. Honourable Mentions As I said in the introduction, it is incredibly difficult to compare someone who only ever played domestic football in, say, China or Malaysia, but was a superstar, with someone who forged a career in a more established league, but had more modest achievements in that stronger league. Some of the players who missed out largely by virtue of never or very rarely having been tested against top-class opposition include Malaysian legend Mokhtar Dahari, Iranian icon Ali Parvin, North Korea's hero at the 1966 World Cup, Pak Du Ik, and undoubtedly the greatest Chinese footballer of all time, at least when one discounts Frank Su, Li Wei Tong, who played predominantly for South China FC in Hong Kong and was once famously denied a move to Arsenal even well into his 30s. Those who did spend a certain amount of time playing outside of Asia but still missed out and deserve honourable mentions include the likes of Shinji Kagawa, Ali Karimi, Kim Ju Sung, Yossi Ben Ayun, Mordechai Spiegler, Ali Dyer, Kazuki Honda, and Shunjuk Nakamura. There are countless others I could mention, many of whom would be more than deserving of honourable mentions, but those are the players that came the closest to making my final seven. I should add, since I know many of our Indian subscribers will be watching, an honourable mention for Sunil Chatri, who has scored a remarkable 72 goals in 115 games in international football. Chetri was unable to establish himself in Europe or in the United States, hence why he can't rival any of our final seven, but his record in India and in international football is superb, and hopefully his fame can provide a catalyst for future great Indian and indeed Asian footballers who are able to succeed outside of Asia. So those are your honourable mentions, but there is obviously the small matter of top spots still left to explore. Paulino Alcantara Paulino Alcantara belongs to a different era of football to someone like Son Heung-min, and it's worth noting that Alcantara played for both an Asian and a European national team. Born in modern-day Philippines, whilst it was still part of the Spanish East Indies colony, Alcantara's father was Spanish, but his mother was Filipino. That meant Alcantara had dual nationality, and two years after his birth, Filipino revolutionary forces proclaimed an end to Spanish rule over the islands and declared independence. Alcantara is best known for his two stints at Barcelona, from 1912 to 1916, and from 1918 to 1927, which was sandwiched by a two-year spell with Bohemian Sporting Club back in the Philippines. Alcantara scored 395 goals in 399 games for Barcelona in total, as far as the club is concerned, but many of those goals came in regional or now defunct competitions, meaning his tally in officially recognised fixtures stands at a more modest 143 goals. That headline figure of 395, cited by Barca, means they consider him to be the club's second highest scorer of all time, trailing only Lionel Messi and even the secondary official number of 143 puts him ahead of the likes of Samueletto and Rivaldo in Barca's top 10 scorers of all time. A diminutive but feisty centre-forward with a thunderous right foot and a sixth sense for sniffing out chances, Alcantara represented Catalonia, the Philippines and Spain at international level, scoring 11 goals in 11 games for the three national teams combined. He eventually retired to enormous fanfare in Catalonia, aged only 31, to become a doctor, although he later sullied his reputation among some in Catalonia by joining the fascists and supporting Franco, who was famously not particularly adored in those parts, during the Spanish Civil War. Whatever you make of Alcantara's political leanings though, no one could deny his talents, and he remains the greatest Asian footballer of all time, as far as I'm concerned. So that is it for today's video. Thank you all as ever for tuning in, hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for the one and only HITC Sermons. Oh, and you can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram, where the username is simply at HITC7s on both.